What we've seen so far in terms of trimming our clips has involved editing or removing part of the head or tail of the clips. When I say head, I only mean the start of a clip and tail, the end of the clip. Well, that's great if you only need to cut away extraneous footage that occurred at the start or end of the clips. However, we might want to use ranged areas of clips from inside the clip, i.e. not the head or the tail. Admittedly, we can achieve this, or partially achieve it anyway, by using the source monitor and setting the in and out points appropriately, and this works exactly how we want it to work. However, once you've done this and placed the resulting trimmed clip onto the timeline, it would be useful if we could further edit the clips in terms of sections within the clip placed on the timeline. Well, of course we can do. I wouldn't be saying all this, would I, if we couldn't? And we achieve it by using the cut or razor tool to cut the specific clip on the timeline and then further edit it. I'll show you what I mean. This is the cut or razor tool here within the tool palette. Officially, it's called the razor tool, but its shortcut is C, hence I refer to it often as the cut tool. Anyway, whatever you refer it to, the official name of razor tool or the cut tool, it's this one here, the sixth one down. By the way, just below that, we have the slip tool with its shortcut of Y, and then below that is the slide tool with its shortcut of U. We'll get to this later. Right, let's look at the razor tool in action. First of all, you'll notice that the timeline lasts this amount of time. And when I use the razor tool, even if I cut here or here, then the timeline remains the same. Well, that's because I've not actually removed any frames. All I've done is cut the clip in preparation of either cutting or removing some of the frames. So from this point, to do more than just simply cut it, i.e. to remove some frames, I can either use the select method on clicking on any of these parts that I don't want, and then hitting the delete key on my keyboard, or I can now use one of the edit tools that we've seen before, i.e. the trim tool. Now once I have done it here, as you can see, I'll have to right click in that gap and choose ripple delete. But now notice of course our sequence length has been reduced. By the way, if you place the CTI where you want to cut, well by using the razor tool now, you only need to be fairly close to it. You don't have to be exactly there, because once you have set up your CTI to be the exact frame, moving close to it with the razor tool and clicking snaps to that position. Okay, so those are those two tools. I'll look next at two other editing functions that are similar, but distinct enough to have two separate tools. I'm talking about the slip tool and the slide tool. The slip tool has the shortcut Y, whilst the slide tool is accessed quickly by selecting U. Now before I demonstrate them, I'll quickly explain what they do and how they differ. To be honest, they are a little difficult to explain, but if you think of your clips on the timeline here as playing cards, if you take one clip or one of these playing cards and slip it underneath the adjacent cards or clips, then of course now you'll not be able to see all of the clip or card that you slip underneath because the clips or cards above them obscure them. So with that in mind, notice that once I select the slip tool, as I roll over a clip and select, I can move to the left to slip the head or tail of it underneath the adjacent clip. By how much can be read on the little tooltip that pops up on the timeline and you can see either a negative or positive number informing us by how much we have slipped underneath. Once I'm happy where I want to slip this to and deselect, notice that the timeline and our sequence here, well the length remains the same. And that's because I've merely moved the range on display for the clip. Of course we need some frames either side of the clip to make this work effectively, or to give us room to manoeuvre. Ok, well now I'll do the positional antithesis of this, in that I'll select the slide tool. This tool allows me to slide the selected clip on top of the adjacent clips so that our selected clip covers up the clips below it. So, as you can see, similar, as I said a moment ago, but they operate and achieve the end result in slightly different ways.